With the announcements of a bunch of new parts, there are great sales to be had. Looking at the new and used market, we're going to be showing you the best computer you can build for less than $1,000. The first parts we're picking is the CPU and the motherboard. If you're choosing something like the i5-12400F, you need to think about the price of the motherboard that will fit your needs. For example, the ASRock B660M is a relatively cheap motherboard, but it has little room for expandability when it comes to storage. It only has one PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slot, which we will utilize later, but the other M.2 slot is only Gen 3. It's also worth noting that cheaper motherboards tend not to have Wi-Fi built in. So if you're going to need Wi-Fi, you're going to need some sort of Wi-Fi adapter, which isn't expensive, but it's something to keep in mind if you're working with a tighter budget. But if you need a lot of fast storage now or in the future, you'd want to go for a motherboard like the Asus Prime B660MA AC D4 GSI. This motherboard does check all the boxes that the last one didn't, but it comes at a higher price. But if you're looking for upgradability in the future, this is the price you're going to have to pay. If you're worried less about upgradability and are more focused on cores and threads, something like the Ryzen 7 3700X might be the CPU for you. This processor has two more cores and four more threads than the i5-12400F and can be as cheap as $120 on the used market. Although the i5 beats the Ryzen 7 3700X in single and multi-core performance, these more cores and more threads could be useful for something like streaming or using a lot of Adobe applications at one time. Here's some other great CPU and motherboard options from both Intel and AMD within a $300 price point. RAM is pretty simple. You're looking for good timing, at respectable frequencies, at the best price possible. We would recommend that if you're building on LGA 1700 to stick with DDR4. Although LGA 1700 supports DDR5 on some motherboards, we simply don't see that increase in performance to warrant the higher price tag. With this type of budget, we'd like to strive for 32GB of RAM at 3200MHz or higher, but 16GB is manageable if you only plan on having a few applications open at once. 32GB will run you around $80 to $90, whereas 16GB traditionally is anywhere from $45 to $55. But what about all of our games? When you're looking at an M.2, there's a few things that you should keep in mind. If you want a lot of storage that is really fast, it can almost hit up your entire budget. So you need to find a good balance. Working within the budget we've presented, something like this option from PMY will deliver PCI Gen 4 speeds with over 3200 megabytes per second read and write speeds at less than $90. Although with decent speeds with PCI Gen 3 and SATA, you can find major savings. You just need to ensure that your CPU and motherboard support Gen 4 SSDs if you choose to go the faster route. If you're planning on mostly gaming on this computer, we highly recommend you stay away from hard drives. They are a very inexpensive option, but there's a reason why they're so cheap. When it comes to your computer case, this is mostly preference. I know, I know, thermals do matter, but a decent airflow case with two or more well-positioned fans should suffice. Staying at less than $100 is a good price point to look for. Unless you want to build your PC on the floor, that's fine too. Cases like the Fantex Eclipse G360 APH, the brand new Fractal Design Pop Air, or something budget friendly like the Roswell Spectra D100 will all deliver to respectable airflow with all the cool RGB. All of these cases support full ATX motherboards, so if you're looking at other options, just make sure it supports your motherboard and your power supply. Oh yeah, the power supplies. This is the only part of the computer you can't afford to cheap out with. It's not worth it. With the parts we selected, we're going to be looking at anything above 700 watts. This will give you room for most upgrades, and they're relatively affordable. The Thermaltake Smart Series 700 watt power supply is a great choice at only $50. It's nothing special, but to make sure you get all your parts you want in your build, this is the best choice. Something like the EVGA Supernota 750G5 is another good option. It costs slightly more than the Thermaltake, but you get a few more watts and that gold certification. And it's fully modular, so that's always a plus. Alright, now the time you've all been waiting for, the graphics card. After doing a deep analysis of 12 mid to high tier graphics cards new and used, here's what we came up with. If you're willing to buy used, the GTX 1080 Ti is the clear winner, although it will have some drawbacks, such as not having any RTX features, but this is still the best price performance card on this entire list. Scoring a 9,899 in time spy, it's equivalent to the RTX 2070 Super and comes in at $30 less. But if you're looking for something new and shiny without the risk involved in buying used parts, the RX 6700 XT is the clear winner. Before all the NVIDIA keyboard warriors start typing in the comments, it's simply the best price per frame card. The 6700 XT sells brand new for $370 and can be found used for less than $340. Although if you appreciate all the features like NVIDIA Broadcast and DLSS, there are good options for that too. The 3060 Ti is a tank for the price. And they sell for only $450 brand new. And if you're willing to shop used, you can find them as low as $375. And it's marginally close in most titles and actually surpasses the 6700 XT in some games that are more NVIDIA friendly. Although there are some better priced performance cards on this list, the 10,000 points or higher mark on TimeSpy is what we should be expecting from a $1,000 build. So working within our $1,000 budget, we put together our best priced performance build. This system will offer great multitasking capabilities with 32GB of RAM, and will have great single thread performance with the i5-12400F. 
paired with the ASRock B660M motherboard, this will help us achieve those PCI Gen 4 speeds with the PMY CS2140. With the 6700 XT at the helm, we're looking at fantastic frame rates at both 1080p and 1440p. Powered by the Thermaltake 700W power supply, we get a decent amount of headroom for future upgrades.